that I have in what happens next. While I have, have not experienced it, what I have is evidence of spiritual encounters that I've had in and around death and dying. Mm. And one of them was, and I'm sure I've said it before, was my auntie dying, mm. the, the 96-year-old auntie, and she promised that she would let me know spiritually when she was doing the elevator trip to heaven, that I would know within a shadow of a doubt that this is when it was going to happen. And I happened to be in a in a corporate presentation at the time. She died. Get out of the presentation and I get a missed call from mum. Auntie Edna's died. I was so upset that I had missed this spiritual connection moment with her. And then I drive crying to Cherrybrook shops and I just, all of a sudden I get out of the car, park the car and walk in. I'm sitting outside the chemist, I think I am. And all of a sudden I get like a Holy Spirit whoosh of, I want to say wind or sensation that rips up through my body and I just know in my deepest internal spiritual self God is prompting me in this moment that she had waited we're talking it was only a, not a, under an hour I believe mm. waited and God had given me this experiential knowing that Auntie went then in that moment to be with the Lord Welcome back to another episode of Filthy Hope. If it's your first time here, welcome. Uh, on this podcast, we spend time in the grey spaces where Jesus, life and culture intersect. I am your host, Pastor Jonty, and Rev Ness, as always, is my hey, co-host. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. It's, I'm, I'm enjoying this warmer weather. Oh, it's um, good, isn't it? I, I'm a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit warm-blooded. I, I just, feel, every, life feels better when it's warm. Well, you talk um, about being a, having, using your reptile brain. Yeah. <laughs> My lizard brain, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lizard boy, you come out yeah. in the sun. That's where you get your energy. Yeah, so I've been, I've been loving this, this warmer, warmer weather. Yeah, it's weather. interesting. Um, I sort of left in winter, went yeah. up to the far north Queensland, up to Port Douglas for a week off, and then came back and we're in summer. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh. Summer in August. Yeah. Everything's fine. The planet's not dying. <laughs> no, nothing wrong with us. It's all normal. Business yeah. as usual. That's all right. Um, we're back, just the two of us. We've had a guest last week. So it's time, as is becoming more and more regular oh, for Event Central. Yeah, it's my go, isn't it? Yeah. I'll play the music, John T. So, for our listeners that maybe are going, what's Van Central? You're going to get used to it. We're going to do a, a, We've been doing more of them, so hopefully you're starting yeah. to get the idea. But Van Central is the opportunity that one of us have to rant and rave about something that is giving us the shits. Yeah. Uh, the, the pettier, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, so, Ness. Yeah. What's been giving you the shits? Jet Star. <laughs> <laughs> We love a cheap flight. Yeah, like so. But. You, yeah, so you go. You're going on a holiday, and you're really excited to be going on a little holiday, a little quick vacay. Yeah. And but you've got to fly to get to Port Douglas, right? If you're only going for six days, you got not worth driving. And yeah, yeah. So we're going to fly, and oh, Jetstar. Rob hates it. He's got another word for Jetstar. There's a big expletive that goes before the star. Gotcha. And because when you look at where how he sits, and you'd be the same, Jonty, his knees are actually penetrating the chair in front of him. Yeah. That's him sitting in an upright position. I at least have about oh, an, an inch and a half before my knees touch the the seat in front. So I've got a little bit more space. But it is it is I don't know, if you had a hugely fat ass, I just I think your fat would ooze under the seat. It's just I had a tiny little um, Asian woman sitting next to me and she was petite and so I felt like I had all this extra physical space around me, you know. But it was just bad from the moment that they're running late, from the whole arrangement to the 
getting your bag in the overhead locker to the whole crapola mm. that goes with that airline. It's just budget airline for a reason. Yeah. They just yeah, yeah. they don't. Do you know what? To their credit, they don't over deliver. They deliver budget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just so rough. Does what it says on the it tin. It does. Yeah. It's it's just this. You're travelling in this tin can for three hours, breathing in recycled fart. <laughs> it, it's so bad, Jonty. It's awful. Oh, and then I had a kid screaming in front of me and tantrum behind me, and then oh, it was just one of those really bad moments, and I felt like an old lady. <laughs> Because I've been a mum on a plane with kids chucking a wobbly, you know, yeah, and I know yeah. what that's yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, I always oh. think when, like if people getting annoyed at another kid on a plane screaming and crying. Yeah. It's like you you don't even have to like – that kid isn't even on your lap. No, I don't even have Can to you imagine deal with what it. it's – Exactly. Yeah, like, that's so exactly right. So I just put right. up with it. You don't Oh, even. I feel real. <laughs> it's such a bloody disgusting vent central but anyway it's a petty bloody thing i'm lucky enough to be able to afford to catch any even a shit flight yeah, up yeah, to yeah. port douglas to have a luxury six days up there and swim with the fishies mm. and i feel like a bastard for actually just even venting on it john T. well I'll, I'll add something to this okay uh, and this happened the last flight i was on it was domestic mm. um and it was couple of hours, I think, from memory. It wasn't far. It was up to Hamilton Island. Yeah. Again, really rough life that I get to fly to <laughs> Hamilton terrible Island. terrible life. That I'm complaining. But it's like as soon as the wheels leave the ground, the seat in front of me, funk, just goes all yeah. the way back. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even that tall. Oh. So I, I can't imagine what it's like for other people. That yeah. Have a bit more it's just length rough. To them. But like, especially like it's a, it's a mid-afternoon flight. It's only a couple <laughs> of hours. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Put your seat up, you idiot. Yeah, play the music. I feel like a bastard. So today, for our main segment of the show, we're going to talk about a topic that has, that, weirdly enough, come up a lot for me recently. Um, and in the past, we've had uh, people ask, Ness, yeah. that's weird that you like funerals. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be talking about funerals, but more broadly, the like this topic of death and yeah. dying. Yeah. Um, so obviously, fair warning, if you don't feel like having a conversation about the inevitable demise that we're, that is facing all of us, yeah. um, this may, like, yep, chuck this one on the back burner. Come back when you're feeling a little bit more willing to, to talk about death. Um, but that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I guess to start, we're going to go a couple of different places with this. Talk to me yeah. about this love you have of doing funerals. Well, this conversation came up because I went to my very first secular funeral mm. and it was my godmother and there was not one mention of God in the entire thing. She'd actually, she had a long-term battle with breast cancer and she had asked me at another friend's funeral if I could do her funeral but her children didn't ask me to do the funeral. She, the children, um, got a, a celebrant to do the funeral. Um, and I was fascinated to see how they were going to do it. And at first glance, it was quite amazing. It was just at the crematorium. I've done many funerals at the crematorium. But I, from the moment I arrived, there was a beautiful silver old Mercedes-Benz hearse and in it was a big wicker basket and she was in the wicker basket. And I, and I hadn't seen a wicker basket as a coffin before. It was very beautiful. I thought, oh, this is lovely and gorgeous flowers. I thought, oh, that's so earthy, Mother Earth kind of vibe. Well, that was the vibe that the whole funeral took on. And... Um, 
So I wanted to chat with the celebrant before the funeral started so I could pick their brain. And I never said that I was a minister or anything like that and I just listened and she said, oh, we, um, you know, your godmother was a, um, she was a queen. She had queen energy and she was a queen of the world and today we're going to celebrate what was her life. And I think the reoccurring theme that I heard was that she loved champagne She loved a party and she did life her way. And that's all we really heard. Mm -hmm. We heard that from a slew of different people that said the same kind of thing, painted a picture of her life, which was I think a very limited, shallow picture of the woman that I knew's life and didn't do her justice at all, quite frankly. There was not one mention of afterlife, higher being, God, anything, nothing. This was just an opportunity to all gather for the last time, they said, um, as her friends and family to um, pay their last respects to her. That was it. And I suppose that's what we do at a funeral, Mm. right? But there was no hope. There was no promise or glimmer of hope in that service at all. And it left me really sad. Mm. It was the worst funeral I've ever attended because there was no mention, there was no... I think the, the promise of the hope that we have in in God as believers of Christ, that we will be in eternity with God, worshipping God and singing the Holy Holies when we have that moment, you know, in the afterlife. There was no talk of that. She goes into the cooker out the back and over Red Rover. Mm. So it left me pretty sad. But so that was not a good funeral in my opinion. But I Do do you have a sense of how other people found it? My my people that were with me, yeah. um three of them were Christians mm-hmm. and they were felt the same. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. It's a bit mm. like going to a wedding where there's no joining together in the name of God and they're just, you're just getting married because you want to be with them for the rest of your life and you say all these dumbass promises like I promise I'll do the dishes. From a non-believer's perspective, um, that like uh, it kind of makes sense. If you don't believe in a God. Yeah. Then all there is to do at that point in at the end of someone's life is to remember their life. Yep. And to share in like those memories and, and celebrate the life of that person and, yep. and say farewell. Yep. Um, yeah. Um So I I don't know, it, it's it's an interesting thing where because I agree, like part of having gone through uh you know, saying saying goodbye to some family recently and some friends mm. are also in that process at the moment. It's really, really difficult. Mm. Key for me as a believer is choosing to have faith in the resurrection. Yeah. Um, not just a spiritual resurrection but a physical resurrection. Exactly. The, the physically resurrected Christ. And, yeah. And the hope that we have that that, that brings. Um, but, yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like, yeah, it, I... I, I, I I struggle to wrap my head around what that must be like for a non-believer but at the same time I recognise that that's no less valid. It's not, not, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But I just don't know where you seek any level of comfort. Yeah. Because I know in, um, in a Christian funeral we say many scriptural sentences, one yeah. of which is from John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Mm. 
that gives me huge comfort. Yes. Um, I think I think to say that and to believe that. One of many great mm. scriptural texts that we say at a Christian funeral. Yeah. That underpins our faith and belief in the risen Lord. Mm. This isn't over. This is just this is just a um a dash or a comma or a um Ellipses. It's, yeah. yeah, it's just a little edit in the next chapter. Yeah. I think yes, and also death death does suck. Oh, fully sucks. And I think something that I find sometimes a bit disingenuous in some of the Christian funerals that I've been to is the the lack of acknowledgement that it sucks. That it sucks and it's the emphasis on they're risen with, again. They're with God, risen again. We'll be, we'll be all be together in heaven. Yeah. Without actually spending time in and acknowledging the reality that you, we are now living in a life with that absence. Yeah. Like a person that we loved was here and now they are not. Yeah. And that absence is real now as opposed to the reality that we yeah. hope in and have faith in that, yeah. you know, in the, in the resurrection. Yeah. Um, I often use that very language mm. that this sucks. Yeah. This is – and particularly if it's a young person that's died. I've said that many times. This is so unfair. This is it feels cruel and mean and I don't even understand why. Mm. And people have often said to me after the funeral, thank you so much for being so honest yeah. because the words that you said reflected what I was feeling – not all those platitudes like you just said of, yeah, you know, yeah. oh, um, you know, in heaven now and you'll be reunited. It's in just a blink of a t- time you'll be with your loved one and blah de blah That doesn't help. Mm. It's bullshit. It can help but not when it feels completely disingenuous to the mm. feelings that, mm. that the person's that accompany, feeling. Yeah, like yeah. family. yeah. Partners. Kids have lost their Ki- dad. Yeah. yeah. yeah or, wife or even has lost her husband. Parents have lost kids. Kids. Oh my gosh. Like, the recent one that I did, mm. you know, 37 year old girl who died and just died, came home from work and died. Yeah. And it's like, man, that just sucks. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. how do you get your head around that? You know, hello, God, this is just so awful. This yeah. is just disgusting. In so many ways. Part of me, a part of this like tension that I feel around like Christian funerals is this like it feels like it's disingenuous, A, not not just because that we're sometimes not uh, voicing the grief that's present but yeah. also there's this almost like certainty <laughs> that can feel really performative in terms yeah, of like. That we know. That we know. Oh, yeah. When in reality we, we don't. don't. I haven't been there. Have, have you no died idea. yet? We have no idea. No. And, and and it's interesting as well, and we'll get to some some Old Testament scripture, but like pre-Jesus, there's this under, that the understanding of death and the afterlife is so different to what we now understand in, in a post-Jesus, mm. often Paul-centric mm. un- understanding of what death and resurrection looks mm. like. Before that, there was really any idea of what an afterlife looks like mm. death was just this thing that we don't get to see past mm. and it's it's a mystery and all we know and all we can feel and experience is the mm. absence that that of that the person death yeah. leaves us with yep um and so sometimes i've sat in funerals and gone this this is just feels totally disingenuous because we're speaking well, someone someone is up the front speaking about this person as if they know exactly where they are. Mm. And we don't. Mm. And then that feeds into this deeper thing about what does happen? Where, yeah. where do we go? Yeah. What What's going to happen when I die? Yeah, exactly. Because newsflash. Yeah, we're all going to. We're all going, brother. <laughs> we're all going to die. Yeah. we're yeah. all. Can we have champagne at mine? <laughs> I have made – can you – you'll be there because I will die way before you – I have asked my family, my girls might be in such grief at the time that they forget, can you please arrange or just I'll leave you the money to do it. Mm. I want people to have champs on arrival. Do you know what I mean? And just like cheers my body. Mm. Cheers, you know, great, mate, she's milked life. Mm. I want you to celebrate. 
my life. That's how I feel, that's how I feel right now. Absolutely. There's I don't want you to cry. I just want you to celebrate. Cheers. Somewhat taking the piss, but my fiance <laughs> has spoken about how she wants her funeral to be on a boat. Right. So you can't leave. <laughs> oh, and there's going to be a class of year two students playing the recorder. That's just cruel. And bagpipes. <laughs> Why? What is wrong with her? <laughs> because, you know, it's this idea, like, not to take it to too punish, seriously. Yeah. Just to, you know, and I think that. Yeah, that's That right. to me, as, as much as that's a, like, that's a joke. Being funny. I'm just yeah. being funny. But like. I'm not about the champagne, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm holding you to <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's this like how, how we actually choose to have a posture towards death has a massive influence on how we live our life. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, I, wh- whether you make peace with it, whether you mm. don't mm. even mm. want to acknowledge it or think mm. about it until the very last minute. Yes. And as people of faith, we have baked into that there is a there is a a relationship with death um yeah. because we have faith in, a, in an eternal god and a, and a resurrected christ um but i mean and this might be as, as good a time as any to introduce there's, there's this passage that um uh, the book of ecclesiastes which is one of three like um wisdom books in the old testament uh, the other the other two of which are proverbs and job um they're really interesting ecclesiastes is like the the emo kid of the three where it's very pessimistic and nihilist um but in a really interesting way and, and there's there's this passage in chapter nine that i'll read for you now the heading of which is a common destiny for all <laughs> um and all along the way up until this chapter there's a bunch of stuff about and the the, the original root word is this word hevel which translates literally to smoke or mist, mm. but in, in Ecclesiastes often almost always is meaningless. Mm. And so there's all this stuff about, and I've watched people do this, 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 it's all meaningless. Mm. Meaningless, meaningless, everything under the sun is meaningless. And it arrives at this point in chapter 9 where it says, so I reflected on all of this and concluded that the righteous and the wise and what they do are in God's hands, but no one knows whether love or hate awaits them all share a common destiny the righteous and the wicked the good and the bad the clean and the unclean those who offer sacrifices and those who do not as it is with the good so with the sinful as it is with those who take oaths so with those who are afraid to take them this is the evil in everything that happens under the sun the same destiny overtakes all the hearts of people moreover moreover are full of evil and there is madness in their hearts while they live and afterward they join the dead Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. Ooh. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward and even their name is forgotten. Their love, their hate and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. So go eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart for God has already approved what you do. Always be clothed in white and always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy your life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life (laughs) that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days. For this is your lot in life and in your toilsome labour under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom. So it's like inescapable that we're all going to die and yeah. at this point in the in this piece of scripture the, the the teacher or the writer or the the voice that the writer is representing is like at a certain point we don't we, we just can't know where we're going or what we're taking with us mm. so what are we going to do now yeah wow how we live our life now is almost a reflection of how yeah, we reckon with or don't reckon with the fact that we're going to die. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It it's interesting because I in my family I've got one parent who's incredibly organized with mm. funeral Everything's written down. Everything's orchestrated. It's as if it's been – it's fully planned, paid for, done. Mm. 
we're given the wills, we're told how it's going to roll out, there is no secrets here. The other parent refuses to have the conversation. I am not ready to have that conversation. I've got many years left in me and I will not have this conversation. Like total denial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This person that died recently, she only signed a will the week before she died. She would not talk about dying Mm. at all. And she was in palliative care at this point. Total denial. (sighs) Then I had an aunt who had been wanting to die since she was in her early 60s when her husband died. She didn't really want to live anymore. She wanted to go and be with George. And she ended up living in way into her late 90s. Whinging and bitching and complaining (laughs) about life the whole way. Why am I still here? Until she finally gave her life to Christ into into her late 90s. And then guess what? She died. Oh, wow. I think um, that wisdom literature is most interesting. Um, I... uh, I have a perspective that I don't want to die yet because I've still got a lot I want to do. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, my anxiety comes from I don't want to die yet. Mm. I'm not scared of dying because I have the assurity of knowing where I'm going and, and while I, I don't know what that looks like, I'm okay with that. I know mm. that it's, it's accompanied with great peace. And I feel like I've gathered some evidence on that in the living and in the dying from what I've experienced with people Um, that it's going to be quite peaceful. Mm. It's going to be okay. I think like for me there's a difference between like I'm not particularly anxious about being dead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I do have some anx- like anxiety about dying. The process of Like the process of, of yeah. dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a Christian, I can kind of go, I don't know what happens when I'm dead. Mm. Um, I have a hope and a faith in the mm. fact that I'll be reunited mm. with my creator. Mm. Whatever that looks like, I mm. don't know. There's some... A Biblically, lot of, a, it sounds epic. It sounds pretty sweet. There's also a lot of stuff about heaven actually being about what we do on now. Earth, on now. Yep. So like yep. who knows, right? Yep. Um, I actually heard there's an atheist school of thought that I think it's from – it might be a Ricky Gervais thing who's a, like a <laughs> comedian. comedian, actor, writer who uh, is a public atheist. Um, and I think I'll, – I'll see if I can find it. I'll put a link if this is, if this is where, it, where it was. But it was on like – he was on Stephen Colbert um, – one of many times he's done that, and, and they, they have they used to have, do these like debates about Colbert being, I think he's Catholic, right? Um, a, uh, Ricky being an atheist, excuse me. And when uh, Colbert asks him, "So what happens when you die? What'll what'll it be like when you die?" Ricky, without blinking, just says, "Oh, the same as what it was like before I was alive." Yeah. Um, and I actually think that there's that's interesting a deeply christian idea at the heart of that that the molecules and atoms that make up me for about 80 years god willing know that they are molecules and name themselves jaunty because god breathed life into them yeah um but for billions of years before that those molecules existed already Mm. in in a different form Mm. and will and will return will will return to that form Mm. I, I, I have no memory of mm. what those molecules molecules were doing or felt like 27 28 29 30 40 years ago mm. um, but I know that the essence like the soul of who I am mm. um, you know we, we can read about um, you know there's the passage about God knit me in my mother's womb mm. and God knows me before I'm born and all the mm. there's a lot of stuff about that and so Aside from not knowing what happens, I kind of know that it, it's all good. Like, yeah. like I, I go back to being with my creator, yeah. however that looks. Yeah. Um, 
And there's actually, I, I think, a really deeply spiritual element to that. It's beautiful. Um, and how does it make you feel when you think of that? I've gone through phases where I've felt quite anxious about it, but now I kind of go, if my faith is placed in something true, great. Mm. Death's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, my spirit returns to the creator. Yeah. Um, I'll experience heaven, however that looks like. If not, I'll be dead. Do I have to worry? <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. I'll be dead. Yeah. Um, and there's something nihilist and pessimistic about that idea. But I actually think, and that's part of what I love about the book of Ecclesiastes, is like that is so freeing. Mm-hmm. That is so freeing. Well, it's nothing. I it's, don't have to worry about it. It's like flatline. Yeah. Um, because that, like, like that, that is so freeing in terms of like now I get to choose to live my life. Yeah, yeah. I, I get to live my life in a way that as a follower I go, mm. how do I live my life mm. now in a way that positively affects the people around me and spreads the love, grace and truth of God. Mm. After that I don't have to worry about it. Yep. Um, I have faith that I will go to be with my creator and, and that that will be wonderful but if not, I'll be, I'll be dead. Like the, so the, interesting. The idea of resurrection is only 2,000 years old. Yeah, it's pretty fresh, isn't it? Um, and and that, mm. that's where my faith is yeah. in the resurrected Christ. Yeah. Um, but it's almost this like insurance policy of like, well, even mm. if that isn't true, mm. no worries. Like I would rather, from, from a secular perspective, I would rather have faith in something and live life with hope and joy yeah. than not and live life panicking about the ticking clock. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I love that. I have a couple of worries and that is that when I'm dying that my family stick around just to make sure I really am dead. <laughs> I don't want to go in that zipped up bag mm. until I really am cold. Yeah. I'm so worried that I'm going to take another breath or some doctor's had a big night the night before and pronounced me dead and I'm not really. Mm. And what if I take a breath and I'm in that bag and then I'm going to be claustrophobic? I have like that. That is honestly, I know that sounds odd, but that is shit that's gone through my head. Mm. I want to mm. be sure. I want Rob and the girls just to make sure I really am dead before I go in the bag. Yeah. So I've actually said that. Mm. Can they make sure of that? But, you know, the, the idea of the soul and the spirit and the afterlife, I have this, we talked about faith in our Into the Word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of episodes ago and I think about a faith that I have in what happens next. Well, I have, have not experienced it. What I have is evidence of spiritual encounters that I've had in and around death and dying. Mm. And one of them was, and I'm sure I've said it before, was my auntie dying, mm. the, the 96-year-old auntie. And she promised that she would let me know spiritually when she was doing the elevator trip to heaven. That I would know within a shadow of a doubt that this is when it was going to happen. And I happened to be in a in a corporate presentation at the time. She died. I get out of the presentation and I get a missed call from mum. Auntie Edna's died. I was so upset that I had missed this spiritual connection moment with her. And then I drive crying to Cherrybrook shops and I just all of a sudden I get out of the car, park the car and walk in. I'm sitting outside the chemist, I think I am, and all of a sudden I get like a Holy Spirit whoosh of I want to say wind or sensation that rips up through my body and I just know in my deepest internal spiritual self god is prompting me in this moment that she had waited we're talking it was only a, not it, under an hour i believe mm. waited and god had given me this experiential knowing that auntie went then in that moment to be with the lord 
and it gave me huge peace. Mm. I felt mm-hmm. like a nut job telling people about this after it. But I'd also had an experience when my friend Penny had died and I'm sure I've shared this in the podcast before where um, she was a young mum and she had three young kids and she died far too early in her 30s and she I was she was a really good mate of mine and I was really devastated when she died. And I had travelled with a couple of other women with her in her dying days. So I was really close on this journey with her. And I just screamed – when I found out she died, I screamed out to God about that. I just wanted to know where she was. Mm. Like it really makes me upset now. I just wanted to know where she was. I wanted some assurity that she was okay. That night I went to – Bed or it was leading up to the funeral. I went to bed. In the morning I woke and I'd had a had a vision of her. And it was I can see it now. She throwing her head back. She's got long auburn hair. And she's laughing. This she's got a full face. And she's young. And she's eating fruit. And she's laughing. And she's at this joyful table of lots of people. I woke up, I felt really great after I'd had this vision. I said, oh, Rob, I've had, God's given me this vision. I feel really at peace at where she is. I, she's just, she's in heaven. She's restored and, and it's beautiful. Anyway, I get to the funeral and, and then I tell this really good friend of ours, Pam, and she just, Pam nearly has a conniption and she grabs Paul her husband and says, Vanessa, repeat this, repeat. I repeat it. And Paul has a conniption. He says, Pam had the same image. Yeah, wow. When did you have it? I said, oh, I woke this morning with it. Oh, my God, it happened for her last night. Then they said, just stay here. They race off and get another woman from the church. Bring her over. She'd also had the same mm. vision. So what's that, John T? Mm. What is that? That's not A, it's... ...not bullshit because it's the truth. That's what happened. This this is what happened for all of us happened. Three women had this thing. Yep. None of us could make sense of the long auburn hair... Mm. ...until, you know, they at the funeral they do a... um, ...often videos and photographs of the dead person come up on a Mm. montage of... PowerPoint and there she is with long auburn hair as a young woman. I never even knew she had long auburn hair. I always thought she had very short um, post-chemo greyish hair actually. Um, It was really unbelievable. And I just think that's the spirit assuring us of where their beloved daughter, God's beloved daughter is. I Mm. really do. Mm. So with that for me comes great peace. Mm. And I've gathered evidence that this is an afterlife vision. I've been given a gift of this vision. And I think that that's that's beautiful. Plenty of accounts of people having visions in the Bible, you know. Um, I was only fairly new on my Christian walk when that happened. And trying to make sense of that was quite confusing. Mm. But I Mm. know that now to be, I think God's given me a gift in receiving, being able to receive that and uh, to be able to talk about it, to share it with others. What if I'd kept that to myself? Pam would have never known. Mm. Neither would have Mm. Kerry, you know. And so I just think that was a powerful thing. Um, Yeah, I... I also watched my aunt die. I was at her deathbed and we all held hands as she literally exhaled her final Mm. exhalation. Oh, no, she exhaled and then she took her final breath and never did an exhalation. And we're waiting for that final normal. I didn't even know that's what I was waiting for or looking for but it just never came. And then there was this sense... ...of her just leaving. You know the Santa Claus movie when this when he falls off the roof... ...and the Santa suit 
um, Tim Allen's Santa suit disinflates. Is that the word? When you when it goes down, mm. it goes from being a puffed up beautiful yeah, yeah. Santa suit to it being deflates, a flat yeah. deflates yeah. Santa suit. That's kind of what I saw. I watched this essence leave her and I watched the body just be a body. Mm. Like a deflation of a body but the essence left. Oh, sad, powerful, peaceful, a gift to be present in that moment. So in all of this conversation around uh, death and dying, as followers of Jesus, the really important uh, comma at the end of all of this Mm. is the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and those words that Jesus says, and I, often, I say this at a funeral when I ask people to come and light a candle, hmm. I say this, he said, as in Je- Jesus, I am the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So this isn't the end. Hmm. This is, it's, it's not over. It's actually really the beginning of your next eternal segue into eternity eternity yeah which is a promise of awesomeness mm. i think we're going to get there jonty and we're going to go ah oh, hey brother remember when we did that podcast about death and dying mate i wish i hadn't worried about the z- being zipped up in the bag i needn't have worried about that shit mm. i think there's going to be a whole lot of stuff we wished we hadn't worried about because it is going to be more epic mm. than the words in scripture actually tell us it's going to be. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff in, just to reference Ecclesiastes again, there's a lot of stuff about like all the stuff we do yeah. while we're alive, yeah. all the toil, all the worrying, <laughs> all the the thing and the phrase they, they, <laughs> they use a lot in the in the in that book is like the the um, all things under the sun. So like just all, all the, <laughs> all the st- crapola. All the stuff that we do yeah, literally yeah. means it's heavy. It's meaningless. It's mm. smoke. It's mm. it's it's mm. mist, um, and I like that. That's that idea that like when we die and when uh. we're, and when we're our spiritual beings transition into th- that eternal state, yeah. Um, all, all like so much of that stuff is just completely meaningless. And yeah. whether it's the worrying, whether it's the, well, like whatever it is, there's so many things that we do while we're alive. That one, mm. I, you're right. I think once we pass on to that next state. We'll yeah. look back and go, oh, I can't what? believe we put so much effort into effort, worrying yeah, about or, that or crap. emphasis on that. Yeah. Or we spent so much time on this and, it, you know. Yes. And, yeah. I know when I had my um, near-death encounter, mm. I wasn't worried about my credit card or my mortgage. Yeah. Couldn't give a crap about anything other than my daughters and my husband. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was – it was just that. Mm. I didn't even worry about my cats and you know how much I love my cats. Yeah. It was Rob and the girls. That was it. Not my gold bracelet that I loved so much or my fancy freaking car Mm. or my posh bag or any of the shit in this life that I give meaning to. I didn't worry about any of that. It was just about those relationships, those people that I dearly loved. Yeah. That was it. And I think like. The silver lining out of an experience like that, or one of the silver linings, is that clarity. Yeah, because so many deep. people don't have that. It, but I, but I had God had to put me into render me into a position where yeah, my yeah. heart was stopping, mate. But I think so many of us spend our whole lives mm. thinking that all that stuff is the important stuff. Yeah, and realize yeah. at the end of their life that it's the people around us. That'd be a rip off if you got to the end of your life and you hadn't realized it yet. Mm. I think that would be sad. Absolutely. Don't you? Because you yeah. can't take any of that crap with you. No, that's right. Well, the Egyptians yeah. did. They did well, that, in didn't the, they? In the pyramids. Into the, yeah, yeah they the stacked it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, and, and again, looking at the resurrection, like when we look at the, the, the literal process that the person of Jesus went through, yeah. Jesus had to die yeah. to be resurrected. Yeah. Like, and that sounds like really obvious. Yeah. It just be, it goes back to this reality that we were just talking about before that like we all have to recognise and reckon with the fact that our bodies will die. Yeah. 
Um, and Jesus went through that process as well. He physically died and yep. was dead yep. before he was resurrected. And there's the promise of all these great rooms in heaven for us. Mm. I reckon they're perfectly designed for each of us. We've got our perfect little rooms up there. It's going to be a ma- – what was that movie with all the doors? And and Boo with the little – Oh, Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. It's going to be like <laughs> Monsters, Inc. We've all got our room. With a great soundtrack. Yeah, it's going to have a great sound. <laughs> What's going to be the holy, holy, holy um, – a lot of Randy Newman, <laughs> neo, like neo jazz score. <laughs> You're hilarious. I love the Monsters Inc. soundtrack. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to be singing, you know, worshipping. It's going to be lots of organ. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, and I, uh, yeah. The, the the resurrection is the, is the key part of this, and like yeah. I, I always, there's heaps of. Um, cool stuff that you can read about, like the evidence for the resurrection, um, whether it's um, archaeological. Yeah. Um, so whether or not you believe in the resurrection, there is a historical thing that you have to recognise that there was a missing body. Yeah. The body of Jesus was missing. Mm-hmm. That's a thing. Um, but most compelling for me is this idea that like Jesus' followers all gave their life <laughs> in the years following Yeah. for the resurrected Christ. And if that is something that they concocted, as some people think, as a, there's well, a conspiracy. Pack of nut or, jobs then. Yeah. Um, you know? Why me, would you concoct that? Oh, exactly. Yeah. You know? To me, that's that's the really compelling evidence that, that Jesus was resurrected. And again, to, to use the, the often misquoted C.S. Lewis thing, um, either Jesus, and, and it's, it's grown to be, beyond a little C.S. Lewis quote, it's a story or a a phrase that I don't even know where the true meaning starts and ends anyway, but like this idea that either Jesus wasn't resurrected from the dead, he was just a dude who said some cool things and he died, and that's great, but nothing more than some teaching that we can live our lives in accordance to if we want, or he did raise from the dead, Mm. And if you believe that, Mm. that is the most important event in history, the most important piece of information, the most important, like that completely not only changes how you view what happens when we die, but it completely should change how you live your life. Yeah. The fact that whether or not you follow, quote unquote, this Jesus dude, Mm. he physically and spiritually Mm. was resurrected. Mm. I think it's, it's, it's this, I feel like I've spoken about this before, but as Christians, because we hear that so often, Mm. I sometimes have to force myself to step back and try and re-encounter that idea fresh. Because it is insane, not Mm. in a... No. Insanity way, but like... Yeah. Off the charts. That completely rearranges the foundation that we live our life on. Yeah. Yep. That death isn't the end. No, that's right. That God became fully human, yep. died and was resurrected. This is what we say at, in, at towards the end of a Uniting Church liturgy yeah. in the funeral. We say this just after we've commended the body. We say this, if it's called an affirmation of faith, if we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Mm. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Mm. That's really powerful. They're like, that's a powerful affirmation. Yeah. 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 Right at the very end um, of a funeral liturgy, I think. Mm. It's just like, yeah, guys, this is exactly what you said, Jonty. You died for us. It's all good. We are Christ's. We're living. Your loved one's dead but your loved one's with Christ now too. Mm. So we're, we're all, it's all okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still bloody sad though, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's the great thing about mm. 
Christian faith, well, one of the one of the things about Christian belief and faith that it isn't a promise that everything's going to be awesome. No. <laughs> like, like it's a deep transcendent understanding that at a fundamental level yeah. everything is going to be okay. Yeah. But stuff still sucks sometimes. Yeah. People still die. Yeah. People get motor neuron disease and, yeah. and, and oh. die in their 50s. Yeah. Taken far too soon. People get hit by buses and mm. they just die. There was an eight-year-old when I was living before where I'm living now. I was li- living further north up up past Hornsby um, at like a big uh, community fair thing down at the Oval or whatever. Eight-year-old just collapsed and died. Yeah. Who knows what happened? They just collapsed and died. Yeah. Stuff like that happens. It does. And as much as, as Christians we can go... The spirit of that person is now returned to their creator yeah. in eternity and we have all these ideas of what that might look like. The reality here on earth in our physical yeah. bodies is that there's now an absence yeah. that that death leaves us with and that sucks. Yeah. That sucks and mm. we believe in the risen Christ. Yeah, that's right. And they, they, that, that coexisting, that tension between the reality of death Mm. When we're physically on earth and the joy and tra- transcendence of resurrection and, and eternal life, mm. um, that's that Venn diagram that we mm. sometimes talk about um, yeah. between the physical and the spiritual, the divine. Yeah. Um, Christ being being that little crossover point in the middle. Yeah. Um, it sucks and mm. we have hope of eternal life. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's tough, isn't it? So I think to go all the way back to funerals to, mm. to, to wrap this up, I, my my kind of hope, my my desire for Christian funerals, well, not necessarily um, secular funerals, is, and I think and like you say, you you do this, mm. but I've been to funerals that don't do this, is an acknowledgement mm. of the physical, yeah, the earthly. Ugh. This this shit sucks. Totally. This person I has say that. this person has died. Yeah. They are no longer with us. Ripped out of the middle of their life, mate. And I, it's in the same way that Christ had to die mm. and was dead for three days. Mm. I actually think to honor people's lives, we need to. It's necessary yep. to honor that and actually sit in that absence. Yeah. And recognize that, so that we are then able to celebrate their life mm. and and then sit in the hope of, of eternal life after that. Yeah. Amen. Preach it, brother. Yeah. yeah. It's a big topic, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, I don't know how well we did. It was an interesting conversation. Yeah. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, it was, <laughs> was super interesting. I'd be interested to hear what people think about funerals and death and dying and if you've got any um, feedback for us, please give it to us because I think it's interesting. We'll We'll bring it up just like we did with the comment about Will. Yeah. Yeah, 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 love it. Yeah, love it, it when our listeners share. Absolutely. If you want to do yeah. that, jump jump into the Facebook group. There's a link for that down below, or shoot us an email. Uh, yeah, filthyhopepod at gmail Can I end on a on a happy note? Yeah, please. I'd love that. Okay, so I want you to hear this. I did one of these incredible experiences when I was away. Yeah. Okay, tell me if you can hear this. Oh, hang on. Loading. Here it goes. Did you hear that? I'm going to do it again. Hold the end up to the front of the microphone. Okay. Listen to this. That is a cheetah. And I had an experience. If I hold that up, they're not going to see it, are they, John T? No. Nah. No. Nah. But you heard it. You heard it. That is Viking, the cheetah, at the Canberra National Zoo purring... Well, I sat next to him on the ground with Rob and patted his spine. He is the most beautiful part of creation. I got to sit with these three brothers and have this epic encounter with them. It was one of the most beautiful life experiences I've ever had. Mm. Just to be um, so up close with these majestic creatures that didn't want to eat me. (laughs) I felt quite safe but intimidated so it was like this balancing act. 
and just to learn about them and to be able to um, pay ridiculous amounts of money to, for the experience so it goes to their conservation mm. and their breeding program. It was just absolutely beautiful. Um, National Zoo and Aquarium in Canberra, they do these encounters with the cheetahs and I highly recommend it. They are beautiful. Should I send you a picture of it, John, and you can put it up? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it was just gorgeous. If you're into big cats and you know I'm a crazy cat lady, <laughs> they were the, the best buggers I've ever seen. I got to, you know, pat three of them. It was just beautiful. And it saved me 30 grand because I don't have to go to South Africa now. Mm. So that's good. Rob was happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and another long flight as well. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Not on stupid start though. <laughs> yeah, what, 20 hours in recycled oh, farts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel better about this podcast yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> it comes back to a good ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that does us. We'll be back to, for Into the Word tomorrow if you're a listener there. Um, by this point in Into the Word we'll be getting into some vices and yes. the flip side of the fruits of the spirit so come join us there if you're interested um if you're watching on youtube right here on the youtube channel um if you're listening it's got its own podcast feed um but the link is down below for that as well if you want to come join us there if not we'll see you back here next week for more filthy hope and go live your life knowing yes. that you know we believe in the risen christ yeah um, and when you cark it it's all going to be fine yeah yeah it's good yeah. It's a good news story. It's good news. Yeah. It's all good. Amen, yeah. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. We'll see you next time. This is a prayer for the people who want to give up. Who have been hurt beyond repair and cannot bear to see your face in anything. Find peace in letting go of the guilt that is in yours. And find hope in understanding. Forgiveness overwhelming Salvation not deserving